This is the Exxon Radio TV show with Rob McConnell on the Exxon Broadcast Network and our worldwide family of broadcast affiliates. If you have a question for Rob McConnell or his guest, or if you've had a paranormal experience, call toll-free 1-800-610-7035, extension 0, or email xzone at xzoneradiotv.com. On all social media sites, our one address is xzone Radio TV. Are you considering calling a psychic to read your situation? Then consider David Champion, a psychic medium for more than 20 years with thousands of readings under his belt. David Champion will make you feel comfortable. He has proven to be honest and accurate. He's a straight shooter. There's no guesswork. What he sees is what you get. While he is a medium, most of the calls focus on relationships. Not only love, but work, school, neighbors, and more. Need help with finding a job and preparing for the interview? Are you dealing with people who are obstacles in your path? For more information, go to davidchampion.com, $1.50 per minute, paid by credit card, with a minimum of 30 minutes. For your reading with David Champion, call 1-877-702-8598. That's 1-877-702-8598. Do you have a disease that you would like to alleviate through a natural means? Have you been contacted by angels, ghosts, or even extraterrestrials and want to validate these experiences? Or would you simply like to speak with someone who can help you find your life's purpose? I'm Dr. Joseph Mara, and I'm offering my services free of charge for first-time clients contacting me during the month of April. These free consultations include angel card readings, guided meditations, life coaching, and energy healing. If you have always wanted to explore these types of experiences but were skeptical or simply could not afford them, then take advantage of this free special offer. Contact me through my website, a guiding light spelled L-I-T-E dot com, to schedule your consultation today. Until then, I offer you love, light, and laughter. You're listening to the X-Zone Radio Show live and around the world on the Talk Star Radio Network. Visit us online at www.xzone-radio.com. The X-Zone Radio and TV show is largely an opinion talk show. All opinions, comments, or statements of fact expressed by Rob McConnell's guests are strictly their own and are not to be construed as those of the X-Zone Radio and TV show or in any manner endorsed by Rob McConnell, Relmar McConnell Media Company, Talk Star Radio Network, its affiliated stations, or employees. Welcome to the X Zone, a place where fact is fiction and fiction is reality. Now, here's your host, Rob McConnell. Determination, the only key they had to unlock the door. 
And welcome to the Exxon, everyone. My name is Rob McConnell. We're coming to you live and around the world on the Talk Star Radio Network from our studios in Hamilton, Ontario, Canada. The lines are going to be open for you uh, Bigfoot researchers. I'd love to hear from you if you're listening tonight or anyone who has an opinion on, on Bigfoot. Here's the story that uh, broke earlier. Two Bigfoot hunters, uh, two Bigfoot hunters claim that they have a body of one and plan to release a photo and what they claim is DNA evidence at a news conference in Palo Alto on Friday. The Bigfoot, uh, the Bigfoot is claimed to have been found in the woods of northern Georgia by William Witten and Rick Dwyer and is, uh, uh, and the claim is being supported by a Bay, a Bay Area Bigfoot researcher, Tom Biscardi, a multiple local Democrat candidate. Now, the press release as follows. For immediate release, August 12, 2008, Bigfoot body found DNA evidence and photo evidence to be presented at a press conference to be held on Friday, August 15, 2008, from noon until 1 o'clock at the Cabana Hotel Palo Alto in uh, Palo Alto, California. Searching for Bigfoot, Inc., Menlo Park, California, Tom Biscardi, CEO. Bigfoot body found evidence and DNA details to be presented at press conference on Friday, August the 15th. Uh, a body that may be very well the body of the creature commonly known as Bigfoot has been found in the woods in northern Georgia. DNA evidence and photo evidence of the creature will be presented in a press conference on Friday, August the 15th from noon until 1 p.m. At, ca- at the Cabana Hotel, Palo Alto, California. It will only be opened to credentialed members of the press. Here are some of the vital statistics on the Bigfoot body. The creature is 7 feet 7 inches tall. It weighs over 500 pounds. The creature looks like it is part human and part ape. It is male. It has reddish hair and blackish gray eyes. It has two arms and two legs and five fingers on each hand and five toes on each foot. The feet are flat and similar to human feet. Its footprint is 16 and 3 quarters inches long and 5 and 3 quarters inches wide at the heel. From the palm of the hand to the tip of the middle finger, its hands are 11 and 3 quarter inches long and 6 and 1 quarter inches wide. The creatures walk upright. Several of them were sighted on the same day the body was found. The teeth are more human-like than ape-like. And DNA tests are currently being done, and current DNA and photo evidence will be presented at the press conference on Friday, August the 15th. And this was released by Tom Biscardi. And we all remember Tom uh, from the uh, from other events that he tried to hold pertaining to his great finds of uh, Bigfoot. When we come back from this commercial break in two minutes, uh, the lines will be open for you, the Exo Nation. I know that we have a number of... Uh, Bigfoot researchers listening, we're having problems contacting Robert W. Morgan. So, Robert, if you're listening, give us a call at 1-877-528-8255. That's toll-free throughout the U.S., Canada, Alaska, and Hawaii at 1-877-528-8255. Let me hear what you think. Is it possible that this could be the break that Bigfoot hunters have been waiting for? My name is Rob McConnell. This is the Exxon on the Talk Star Radio Network. When we come back, lines are open at 1-877-528-8255 as we talk Bigfoot this hour here in the X-Zone, live and around the world on the Talk Star Radio Network.
find them in the chapels and on their knees to pray. What's it take to be a believer? Tell me who's the same. You think that we come this far looking back on yesterday? Welcome back, everyone. My name is Rob McConnell. This is the Exxon on the Talk Star Radio Network. Apparently, we're having phone problems again here. So uh, I know that a number of you are trying to call in, uh, but uh, I don't know. Technology is great when and if it works. So um, I, I apologize for that. We're still trying to get a hold of Robert W. Morgan. And uh, as soon as we can either get him in or get your calls in, we'll certainly uh, get the ball rolling again. One eight seven seven five two eight eight two five five is toll free, and uh, this is the Exxon on the Talk Star Radio Network. The story is that apparently Bigfoot has been found. What I find startling is that where this body was found, this alleged body of Bigfoot, it uh, there were other Bigfoot seen in the area. Now, to the best of the knowledge that. <sighs> Guys, can you just stop it, please? Thanks, because it, it's I, you know I hear what's going on, so we'll try and contact him at the bottom of the hour. Um, I, I find it very hard and unusual to understand why. Here we are. We've got these two guys in northern Georgia, and to my knowledge, I can't remember having anybody on who has talked about Bigfoot in northern Georgia before. I could be wrong. Um, but there were other Bigfoot in the area where they found this body. Now, there's a, there's, there's a lot of emptiness with this entire scenario. Number one, we don't know the condition where the body was found, what the condition of the body is. Uh, we don't even know who the doctor is who is performing these, these uh, forensic tests, the DNA test. Now, if these people would have contacted somebody like Dr. Jeff Meldrum, I can understand that since he is one of the authorities on Bigfoot. And something else is that there has not been an extraordinary amount of media coverage on this. Now, in the past, Tom Biscardi has um, cried wolf. Uh, he claims to have been victimized by a hoax by somebody in Las Vegas. And then, of course, there was the infamous bear paw a couple of years ago. So it's just one of those things, you know. Is this Bigfoot or is this more hype? No idea. I find it very strange that this also happened during the time of the 40th anniversary of the Roger Patterson, Bob Gimlin film. Coincidence? I don't know. So here we've got a 7 foot 7 Bigfoot that was found in the forest and while they found the fo while where they found the Bigfoot, they also f saw other Bigfoot, which to me is is totally out of character from what all the researchers that we've had on the show have talked about. In fact, this is the first time that a Bigfoot body has been found. Is it possible that these uh, two Bigfoot researchers were in the right place at the right time, and for some unknown reason that this uh, this Bigfoot dropped. Did it drop or was it shot? Once again, there are so many details that are missing in this entire scenario. Bigfoot is one of the greatest mysteries. You've got Bigfoot, you've got Yeti, you've got Sasquatch, you've got the Skunk Ape. And yet, here it is. They claim that... that um, that this is Bigfoot and that they have taken the proper precautionary steps in securing the, the vitals for this Bigfoot. And by vitals, I mean the DNA sampling and so on have gone to a doctor. Is it possible, ExoNation? And if you can't get through on the phones, send me an email. Send an MSN message to talkstarradio at hotmail.com and I'll get it right here. On um, on uh, on my computer here in our studios. 
Once again, I'm sorry we are having telephone problems. Uh, we're not able to answer any of your calls. We regret the technical difficulties, but the people at Talkstar are working on it, and hopefully we'll have it rectified in the very near future. Now, uh, before we get back to Bigfoot, I did a, um, I did a, uh, a dear mid doc, a dear Mr. Scientist, and what I did was I basically um, wrote a letter to Peter Smith and to the the people at uh, NASA's JPL, complaining that you know here they spent four hundred and fifty nine million dollars on finding water on Mars. When there are so many other things that the water that the four hundred and fifty nine million dollars could have been used for. So what I'd like to do now is play the audio clip from YouTube, or you can go to our website at www.exoneradio.com and it is there. And uh, this is what I had to say to the powers to be. My name is Rob McConnell, the host and the executive producer of the internationally syndicated late night talk show, The X Zone, that's syndicated worldwide on the Talk Star Radio Network. Last week on my show, we were talking about the $459 million that the scientific community and the space agencies have spent thus far on finding water on Mars. Well, congratulations, guys. You did it. But at $459 million, what a waste of money and talent. It upset me so much that I decided to do something about it, which I usually do. I wrote a letter to Dr. Peter Smith at the University of Arizona. He is the principal investigator for the mission, and I also copied the letter to the Mars Phoenix mission at NASA's JPL lab in California. Both letters were faxed, and uh, I'd like to read you that letter right now, and I'd appreciate your comments at xzone at talkstarradio.com. Dear Mr. Scientist, I read recently that $459 million has been spent this far on the Phoenix lander mission and that you found water on Mars. This is no surprise since early astronomers have said that there was water on Mars, but it seems to me that some humans just have nothing better to do than to look up to the planets and the stars instead of keeping their eyes on this planet and the perils that face humankind every day. Something like an ostrich putting his or her head into the sand to avoid their surroundings. You know, what they don't want to see and hopefully what won't see them. But really, Mr. Scientist, why is water on Mars, when the minimum distance possible between these two planets, being Earth and Mars, is about 35 million miles? The maximum is over 250 miles. Why is water on Mars so important? How will this water on Mars help my fellow humans, and how do you justify to them $459 million being spent? Okay, you found water on Mars. So now what? Martian mud pies, Martian lemonade, more water for the industrialists of Earth to pollute on a distant planet, or is it truly an exploration to discover whether or not we are alone in the universe? Have you, the people in charge of this overrated, overfinanced exploration to Mars, ever driven down the streets of the cities and towns where you live and seen those people laying beneath the highway overpasses, on city sidewalks, or in the bushes and shrubs of city parks? You know, the homeless. Have you ever driven past a soup kitchen and seen the long line of people waiting to get something to eat? Have you ever seen the lines at shelters of people waiting to have a safe place to sleep for a night? Have you ever, have you ever been to a school and talked to a child who has had nothing to eat for breakfast and whose parents do not have enough money to clothe them properly? Have you ever seen the lineup at a free medical clinic where people who cannot afford medical care go to try and get help? Have you ever visited the poor side of town, Mr. Scientist, you know, the other side of the tracks, and seen what the housing your fellow mankind are living in? Have you ever heard of the people around the world who are dying of thirst and disease because they do not have any water? Have you heard about the crisis that fossil fuel industry has put this planet's economic system in? Not to mention global warming. Mr. Scientist, if you can put a lander that found water on Mars, why can't you find alternative fuel and engines that would not pollute an already overpolluted planet? Why? It makes no sense to me. You know what? I doubt if you have. How can you sleep at night knowing that you've spent $459 million on a barren planet instead of a planet that is teeming with life? No matter where you look on this planet, Mr. Scientist, there are the hungry, the homeless, the sick, the dying, those who need jobs, and those who need a better education, 
And the list goes on and on and on. In my humble opinion, $459 million would have been better spent on a race that you have already forgotten about, Homo sapiens, or modern humans, which are indigenous to the third planet from the sun in our very own solar system, a planet called Earth, a planet where there is water, air, and does sustain life, but certainly can use the money and the scientific brains to help its occupants to help each other today and for the future of humanity. So tell me, Mr. Scientist, how will your discovery that there is water on Mars help my fellow humans? Your fellow homo sapien and resident of the planet Earth, Rob McConnell. Now, I faxed Peter Smith as well as NASA JPL that letter on Tuesday, August the 5th. To date, I have not received an email. I have not received a fax. And I have not received a letter back. I didn't think I would, but at least they know what I think. $459 million could be better spent on this planet, in my humble opinion. I think we spend too much money on the space project. For what? What are we actually gaining from all this money that we're investing? Okay, so we found water on Mars. Big deal. Doesn't help us here on Earth. I guess some people have nothing better to do with their time than to come up with these grandiose ideas on how they can go to another planet. But the sad part is is that they can't do anything to help this planet. When we come back, hopefully we'll have Robert W. Morgan on the line. My name is Rob McConnell, and this is the Exxon on the Talk Star Radio Network from our studios in Hamilton, Ontario, Canada. Can't touch this. Can't touch this. Always wanted to play the guitar? With the Victor Lee Guitar Method, if you've got a song you can hum in the shower, in just one easy lesson, you can start actually to read sheet music and play the guitar. You'll be playing beautifully in no time, and the tunes you write can actually be played on other instruments using the government-endorsed Victor Lee Guitar Translator. Victor Lee's amazing offer is online at www.victorleeguitarmethod.com. Learn how to play beautifully the guitar and read music and translate the music you write to be played on other instruments. Music is the international language, and the copyrighted Victor Lee Guitar Translator instructions are available in most languages spoken around the world. Go now to www.victorleeguitarmethod.com. Open yourself to a wonderful world of music. www.victorleeguitarmethod.com Amethyst works with your guides, angels, and spirit animals to assist you in catalyzing your inner healer, clearing your psychic and spiritual debris, integrating your lost soul parts, illuminating your journey, energizing your spirit, opening your psychic senses, exercising your multidimensional gifts, activating your purpose, empowering your soul, validating your experiences, navigating life's transitions, guiding your process, awakening your spiritual essence, balancing your energies, tapping into the creative flow, realizing your dreams, visioning your destiny, dreaming your world into being, being who you really are. Amethyst is an Exxon iPod partner and can be visited online at www.answersfromyourangels.com or from your Exxon iPod by touching the Angels widget on the main screen. Amethyst. www. Hi, this is Ken Elliott. When I'm floating around the universe, I always try to tune in to Rob McConnell. Hey, hold there, Tricky Frog on Sesame Street. When I want to find out what's going on with UFOs or ghosts, I listen to the X Zone with Rob McConnell. This is Les Corrigan from Target Internet Development. You're listening to Rob McConnell on the X Zone Radio Show. This is John Hogue, Prophecy Scholar, and you're listening to Rob McConnell in the X Zone. Welcome to the X Zone, a place where fact is fiction and fiction is reality. Now, here's your host, Rob McConnell. I'm the swans, what you think I'm seeing? Some strange, you know. 
Sasquatch sitting on the side of his knee and he was talking to Moxie Joe. Where the party they gonna have? Out in the St. John Swans. Sasquatch doing a brand new dance and he called it the Bigfoot Stone. Dancing around the two big foot boogie in the fairly ground. Welcome back to the Exxon. My name is Rob McConnell. We're coming to you live and around the world on the Talkstar Radio Network from our studios in Hamilton, Ontario, Canada. Joining me now is Henry May. We're going to be talking about that Bigfoot that allegedly has been found in northern Georgia. And Henry, how are you? Oh, hello, Rob. I'm just fine. <laughs> you kind of caught me off guard there. <laughs> yeah, no problem. I'm, I, I, I love doing that to people. Hey, tell, uh-huh. me, tell me about this story. Now, you said uh, you, you told me in, a, in an MSN message that you actually saw a Bigfoot in uh, northern Georgia. Yes, I did. In 1984, um, I got to see the face of it, and uh, the face of this supposed body, if it is a body, uh, looks a lot like the face that I saw in 1984. Now, the way that this story is coming out, does it make sense to the members of the Bigfoot community? Well, a lot of them, uh, they are very, some of them, some of them, uh, oscillate between, uh, you know, the pos- there, there's a possibility to, uh, some of them are saying that, uh, it's probably a hoax or because of the, of the re- reputation of the individuals involved. Mm-hmm. See, the, the two guys who found it, were not Bigfoot researchers, were not Bigfoot hunters at all. They were just a couple of hikers out in the woods, um, <clears throat> you know, just out there hiking. All of a sudden, they, they come across this, uh, this, this, this body of a Sasquatch, and um, they managed to haul it out of the woods. Uh, apparently, they used a tow truck. It took them about a day and a half, they said. All right, so what do we know about uh, the uh, the actual way that Tom Biscardi got involved? Because this, this to me, something doesn't sit right. Mm, well, Biscardi heard about it, and uh, he uh, flew to Georgia. Mm-hmm. He actually, he actually got a uh, a, a bit of a um, what you might call a, a little bird told him in his ear. Um, that being Steve Coles, the squash detective, uh, told him that um, that there was a, you know, that he'd heard, he had these guys, see, these guys came out of the website first, BigfootTracker.com, mm-hmm. and then um, it kind of snowballed from there. They were interviewed on Steve Coles' show. They said they had the body. Uh, they described how it, came, how, how it came about, how they came about getting it and everything like that. So that's basically... The gist of it. And then Biscardi heard about it. He flew to to Georgia, where the body was, saw it. And there's photographs that have been taken with him beside the freezer. Um, he's he, so he's actually seen the body. He was on Fox News uh, yesterday morning, and he said that right now the body is in an undisclosed location, but uh, he knows where it is apparently. So um, and he he actually invited uh, the media, the, the Fox News um, uh, reporters, to come out and uh, take a look at it. And did they? Well, they're going to do it next week. Is what they're going to do next week. But uh, of course, Friday is the is the press conference, as as you've been announcing, yeah. and uh, all the major news affiliates are going to be there. What happens to the Bigfoot credibility if this is another hoax? Well, the way I look at it, if this goes out. Um, Worldwide, um, instead of just being on Fox News and a few uh, internet radio shows and things like that, um, if this goes out worldwide, it, it will hurt us if this is a hoax. There's no doubt about it. This will hurt us in the Bigfoot community because um, it, it'll seem like, you know, I'm 60-40 I'm on the authenticity of it. You know, I, I think there's a there's a possibility of it right. being authentic. Um but like I said, a lot of my colleagues in the Bigfoot community, they oscillate from a possibility to, oh, it's a hoax, or, you know, the people who are involved in this, you know, are not exactly the most reputable and things like that. But as I as I 
PMT and the uh, MSN I am, even the blind blind hog gets an acorn every once in a while. Yes, but nine, the other 99.9% of the time he's uh, getting rocks. <laughs> true, true. All right, so if this is Bigfoot, all right, do you think that this will start a Bigfoot um, hunt craze? And what will be the next step if this is actually a Bigfoot? If it's actually a Bigfoot, um, hopefully it will, there will not be a, a big craze of people going out in the woods and get with guns and things like that. If indeed this is real, then um, I think that legislation should be passed to protect the Sasquatch. I mean, because, you know, we've got the body. You know, it's proven. Mm -hmm. You know, and, and I think that um, I, I think that legislation should be passed to protect them. And um, the thing is, the thing is, as Renee DeHinden, as the late Renee DeHinden pointed out, it's not the end; it's the beginning. That's right. Because there's going to be all kinds of uh, studies done on the body, um, and there's going to be people who are still going to—they're still going to continue their research to, to try and get a live one, or to try and study a live one in the wild. The fact that there were other Sasquatch around, according to the uh, news uh, media reports. Um, what would that signify to you? Mm, I, it would signify to me that they are a family unit or a family pod. I don't know what mm -hmm. they call themselves. Uh, and it would signify to me that um, there is more there. Um, you know, the, um, the thing is, you know, these things never travel alone. Right. They're always there's always um, one or you know there's always one or more around you know they're they're always they work in groups they all work at, the Sasquatch work in groups so uh, they're not alone so obviously somehow they were able to get this body out of there mm -hmm. um, you know before the rest of the, uh, the the clan came out of them came came at them I should say I'm I'm just wondering if it was you know. If the uh, if the Bigfoot had a heart attack or you know because we we know very few details about this entire uh, entire scene. Yeah, that's a good question. I have no idea. Yeah. Um, I don't know uh, the the picture that, that that's on your website and um, the picture that's been presented. There appear to be uh, intestines or or, or you know. The, the guts basically yeah. hanging out there on the um, on the uh, the body, the alleged body. Uh, so now I, I did notice that the um, the photograph of the uh, of the alleged Bigfoot bears a striking resemblance to the Bigfoot in the um, Patterson film. Hmm. Yeah. Well, there's always that possibility, but. Um, you know, in my opinion, and, and, and I, I really don't like to rehash the PG movie because sure. I know how I know what your I know what your your uh, position on it is. You know, no, no, no. What I'm saying, Henry, what I'm saying is, if the if this is a legitimate Bigfoot that has been found, in my view, the the photograph looks an awful lot like the like the Bigfoot in the Patterson film. So yeah. if this is a real Bigfoot, then this would also validate um, the Patterson film. True, true. You're right. You're yeah. right about it. Uh, Bill Green wanted to pass along, uh, if this is a real Sasquatch, it won't solve the mystery. It will deepen it with more questions, less answers. That's true, Bill. Leave it to Bill to come up with that attitude. Yeah. All right, Henry, I want to thank you very much uh, for joining us tonight and for sharing your insight, and we look forward to talking to you again in the future, and uh, well, let's chat next week after the uh, press conference. Okay, 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 Rob, that'd be good. Take care of yourself, Henry. Always good talking you to you. Bye-bye now. Yep, bye. 1-877-528-8255 is toll-free throughout the U.S., Canada, Alaska, and Hawaii. My name is Rob McConnell, and we're talking about the Bigfoot that apparently was found in the woods by two hikers uh, in northern Georgia. Now, according to the reports that we've seen on the uh, news media, that, by the way, has certainly circled the world. I was reading articles uh, from India and Thailand today on this. On this. Um, 
the Bigfoot itself is quite the size. Um, let me see, where is it? Uh, do, 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 do. Uh, da, da, where the heck did it go? Oh, there it is right there. Um, but about seven foot seven, over five hundred pounds. Uh, it, the creature looks like it is part human and part ape-like. It is male. It has reddish hair and blackish gray, gray eyes. It has two arms and two legs and five fingers on each hand and five toes on each foot. The feet are flat and similar to human feet. Its uh, footprint is 16 and three-quarter inches long and five and three-quarter inches wide at the heel. From the palm of the hand to the tip of the middle finger, its hands are 11 and three-quarter inches long and six and one-quarter inches wide. The creature walks upright. Now, how do they know that this creature was walking upright? This is going to be an interesting point, because in this release they say the creature walks up upright. Several of them were sighted on the same day that the body was found. The teeth are more human-like than ape-like, and DNA tests are currently being done, and the current DNA and photograph photo evidence will be presented at the press conference on Friday, August the 15th. Hmm... I wonder what's going to happen on August 15th. A lot of hype. I certainly wouldn't want to see uh, the um, the wrong information being given out because, as Henry and I were saying, it will it will certainly uh, hurt the Bigfoot community and uh, Bigfoot research if this is another hoax perpetrated by Tom Biscardi. Is it possible that this is the smoking gun of Bigfoot? Is it coincidence that this was found on the 40th anniversary of the Patterson film? one 877 is toll-free throughout the U.S., Canada, Alaska, and Hawaii. My name is Rob McConnell. And uh, we are going to be trying to get a hold of Sean Forker, who is with, who was with the American Bigfoot Society, and uh, once again, we apologize to all of the Exo Nation who are trying to call in. We are having technical problems with our phone system, uh, but Batman and the newbie are doing their very best to to rectify the situation as fast as we can. Other stories in the news? Well, let's see. Gary McKinnon, the famed uh, Internet hacker who hacked into NASA and the military's database looking for proof of UFOs. He is in England. He's a hairdresser. Uh, he's been given a bit of a reprieve uh, because of extradition proceedings that were instituted against him. Uh, he's got a bit of a stay over in England. His, his counsel and the counsel for the United States government are battling it out in court, and if Uncle Sam has his way, which I'm sure he will, Gary McKinnon will be making a trip into the United States to face charges. Also, uh, publishing giant Random House has scrapped publication of a novel about the um, about the Prophet Muhammad's bride amid fears of a repeat of the violence ignited by portrayals of Islam and the satanic verses and 20 Danish cartoons. So there we have uh, people are being super, super uh, carefree. Not super, I'm sorry, they are being super careful as not to be end politically correct. Also, there's a lot of news uh, about Scientology and more protests by Anonymous. South Park, Scientology, and Isaac Hayes, as everyone knows, Isaac Hayes was the voice of the chef on South Park, but according to insiders... Uh, Isaac Hayes was pressed by the uh, Church of Scientology to give that uh, position up, as well as he was responsible for bringing Scientology to Memphis. And let me see, Angelina Jolie stole uh, Tom Cruise's job uh, from in Scientology, and apparently that is no big news. And um, there have been several UFO reports during the... Um, during the meteor shower that uh, that happened the last night, the um, 
The shower certainly caught a lot of people off guard. They looked up in the skies, and they claimed that what they were seeing were UFOs when, in fact, they were seeing their, their, the, uh, the Parasid meteor shower last night. Strange times. You know, if it's not Bigfoot, it's people seeing UFOs that are really uh, just meteors entering this uh, of the atmosphere. One eight seven seven five two eight eight two five five is toll free. When we come back, we'll take a look at tonight. We'll take a look at tomorrow night, and hopefully, the telephones will be working once again. My name is Rob McConnell. This is the Exxon on the Talk Star Radio Network, and I'll be going to your emails and your MSN messages when we come back. The Exxon, a place where people dare to believe and dare to be heard. We'll be back on the other side of this break, right here on Talk Star. If you've ever wondered about past lives or even life between lives, and you think the whole idea is a little strange, you're not alone. Dr. Georgina Cannon, author of the books Return, Past Life Regression, and You, and her latest book, Discovering the Interlife, writes her books to remove the woo-woo from these regression protocols and to show the therapeutic benefit and opportunities that happen with these journeys. Discovering the Interlife is the one book you'll need as you continue on your life journey. As Shirley MacLaine said about the book, This is a very, very powerful work. So be kind to yourself and find out more about Discovering the Interlife at www.lifebetweenlivescanada.com. That's www.lifebetweenlivescanada.com. You'll be glad you did. To contact Dr. Georgina Cannon at the Ontario Hypnosis Center in Toronto, Ontario, Canada, visit www.ontariohypnosiscenter.com. What's new, Pussycat? Whoa! The cat is finally out of the bag. Secrets of Cat Attitude Revealed. This is the no copycat book that gives you the X Factor. In personable insight and experience to understanding cat behavior. And solving problems from the cat's point of view. Learn the secrets of Cat Attitude Revealed by Carolyn Bartz. That will take the relationship with your cat up a notch and to the next level. Discover why cat owners live longer, healthier lives. Medical facts revealed. And why your cat can't help it. Digital photos to guide you in cat care. Safety tips. Historical and myth gems, and a fun and lightning quiz. The perfect gift for smart cat owners and cat lovers. If you love your cat, take the journey now. Don't wait. To order your copy of Secrets of Cat Attitude Revealed, visit www.secretsofcatattitudedrevealed.com. Secrets of Cat Attitude Revealed. The perfect. And welcome back, everyone. Um, my name is Rob McConnell, and this is the Exxon on the Talkstar Radio Network. I'd like to take the uh, opportunity of thanking all our guests tonight, Jeff Belanger from GhostVillage.com, William E. Marks from WaterVoices.com, David Matthew, Busting the Male Myths, and uh, Henry May for uh, for calling, or did we call him? We called Henry, and uh, joining me in a few seconds will be Sean Forker. On tomorrow night's show, we have uh, Scott Marlowe, Lisa Wojcik, we also have Christopher O'Brien and Cal Korf. That's tomorrow night here in the X Zone. And joining me now is Sean Forker. Hey, Sean, how are you tonight, buddy? Doing great, Rob. How are you? I'm not doing too bad. Uh, tell me, Sean, the um, the story about Bigfoot being found in northern Georgia and the ties to Tom Biscardi. What is your impression and those that you know in the Bigfoot community? Well, from uh, people in my circle. Uh, they're not putting a lot of credibility in this until we see the results on Friday. I'm not putting any faith behind anything until I see DNA results. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, we all know the history of Tom, and hopefully, you know, people change in time, and I hope this is one of those situations where I'll be eating crow, and let me tell you, Rob, crow will never be tasting so good. Same here, buddy. Same here. Um, 
Were you surprised when you heard this story? Uh, well, I've known about this story for a few months now, about a month, and uh, uh, not really surprised because I've never really taken it real seriously. The two gentlemen in question that uh, you know found the evidence really started us with a whole bunch of videos that made a complete mockery out of the Bigfoot field, so I didn't take them credible from the beginning. Uh, Steve Coles, the Squatch detective, investigated it, brought forth some more details, thus getting Tom Biscardi involved and to what the circus it is today. Originally, we weren't supposed to find anything out until September 1st, but since Tom got involved, we're going to find out on Friday, so go figure. Now, why why has uh, this been kept under wraps for so long? Oh, well, a lot of it's trying to find the validity of the fact that they had a body or not. Uh, they were doing a series of YouTube videos, burning uh, Lauren Coleman's books, and uh, uh, doing all kinds of shenanigans for the video, but not proving any evidence. Uh, Steve Coles got involved and really started hammering them hard with questions and uh, got them to open up and talk to him. And uh, Steve found there might be a little validity to it. And uh, Tom Biscardi got involved a couple weeks ago, and uh, since then those videos were taken down. It was handled with a lot more seriousness. I mean, I'll give Tom credit for that. Mm -hmm. But, you know, as much as my uh, mind wants to say, you know, all right, my heart's telling me that there's something else here that's just not adding up. Wouldn't be the first time that uh, Tom was uh, was duped. Uh, I remember when he was uh, taken by that uh, promoter in Las Vegas a couple of years ago. Well, that's the thing. You know, I don't want this to be another stagecoach Nevada. You yeah. know, some of us have worked really hard. Uh, to get decent evidence, and we deserve better than this. And uh, the setbacks this is going to do to us is unreal. You know, for every step forward, you take ten step backs in this field, it seems. And unfortunately, it's, you know, it, it's yeah. starting to get pretty hard. Sean, let's talk uh, next Monday after the uh, press release uh, and the press conference and uh, compare notes. How does that sound? That sounds great. I know I'm going to be anxiously awaiting this, and hopefully I'll have some more information for you, Rob. All right, you take care of yourself, my friend, regards to the family. Bye-bye now. Sean Forker, what a guy. Exo Nation, thank you for allowing us to be part of your day or night, no matter where you are. Once again, I apologize for the telephone uh, problems that we've had, but we'll get Robert W. Morgan on Monday, uh, along with uh, Sean Forker. I'm sure Henry May will be joining us, Eric Altman, and other members of the Bigfoot community to uh, voice your opinion after the press conference. To my producers at Master Control, Batman and the Newbie, thanks, guys, for keeping us on those four big satellites in the sky, Galaxy 4R, Telstar 7, Aglia 2, and G2, uh, G3. And until tomorrow night at 10 o'clock, always remember to keep your eyes to the sky and your heart to the light. Good night now. I know. Named one of the world's greatest psychics, Elizabeth Joyce is now giving readings worldwide via Skype. Elizabeth Joyce is recognized for her clairvoyant ability to help find missing persons, her analysis of dreams, past life regression work, mediumship, and her accurate predictions. Elizabeth has been a frequent guest on the x radio show with yours truly, Rob McConnell, now for several years. For an appointment with Elizabeth Joyce, call 201-934-8986 or Skype at elizabeth.joyce. And for more information, you can always visit Elizabeth Joyce online at www.new-visions.com.